Love to have your company. News at six. Steve Austin's my name. Did you know right here in Brisbane is where the very first holographic zoo was created? And it's actually considered the most high-tech attraction in the world at the moment. The zoo opened their doors, or they switched on their database, I'm not quite sure how to put it, in Cannon Hill last December after a booming Christmas period and decided to keep things up and running. And now it's been such a hit, they have plans to take their holographic animals around the world. Bruce Dell has returned to the studio. Bruce is the Chief Executive Officer of Axiom Holographics. Bruce, this is radio. We can't see it, so I need you to paint a picture in my imagination <laughs> of what a holographic elephant or rhinoceros or grumpy hippopotamus would look like. What they look like? Well, I think we've all seen holograms in movies like Star Wars and Princess Leia. Help me, help me, Obi Wan mm, Kenobi. Obi Wan Kenobi, yes, yes, yes. So you're my only hope. Yes, that one, that <laughs> one. So basically, a hologram zoo is like a normal zoo. Except no all, smell, all, no smell, no smell. All the animals are made out of laser light. We project them in the air. So hologram technology is is new. Um, for example, uh, if you go to the hologram zoo, uh, you can see a twenty five meter whale. Now there aren't any. Sea World doesn't have a tank that big. <laughs> um, we have giant elephants. They, they look real until you go to touch them and your hand goes straight through them. And they, they act alive as well. It's not like they're statues. We they... would have seen an example of this in the, the, sort of the Jurassic Park movies, didn't we, where they had a projection of a holographic dinosaur or something like that. Yes, mm, yes, okay. yes, yes. So basically our company normally builds hologram technology for uh, governments and science centres and defence and things like that around the world. I seem to recall that you built a holographic table for Bentley motor cars. Uh, that, is, that is correct. And that they is loved correct. it so much they, they took it and said, yeah, we, want, we want to use this as a marketing tool, one of our marketing uh, tools. Well, these days we do. Honeywell and Airbus and, okay. and everybody. Um, Prime Minister Modi just used one of our hologram tables to open Asia's largest airport. Bill Gates um, had us build him a luxury hologram, not him personally, but his hotel in the Maldives, the Four Seasons. We built their hologram aquarium there. So um, our, big, our big change So how recently... big is your company now? You must have grown significantly since I spoke to you a few <laughs> years ago. We're not that big. We're still only about 60 people. We're very, very busy around the world. Right, okay. Quite a few offices now. Um, a few years ago when we spoke, we'd built Hologram Entertainment Center. And the big change is we've cracked the way to make giant holograms now. So we used to make little, little ones in okay. little rooms. Now they're really, really big. We're exaggerating. God didn't make giraffes big enough. We've fixed that. <laughs> now their heads are the size of caravans in some cases. And so you're using lasers to do it or to project it? Yes, yes. So it uses okay. laser technology, projects the animals. We brought all the dinosaurs back to life. It's one of the advantages you have when, when the animals aren't real. And um, I think I would prefer a holographic dinosaur than a real one, personally. So yes, thank you. better on insurance. Mm, mm, yes. Better on insurance. So, I've seen the movie. It doesn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So people going to the hologram zoo, they can go to the North Pole. They can go to Australia. Wouldn't that be interesting and exotic? <laughs> and um, uh, we're bringing out Africa soon in Easter. Um, we also have other attractions, like people go across bridges and we have hologram giant lotus blossoms and three-meter goldfish go underneath. So if people go on the website and have a look around at the videos, they'll get some idea. Uh, top attraction in the world at the moment and here in Brisbane. So I don't put on a set of virtual reality glasses or a headset or anything. Virtual reality is where you put screens over your eyes and mm -hmm. you can't really see your friends or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You do still wear glasses, but they're like the glasses you wear at the 3D movies. There's no screens over your eyes. The holograms are actually projected using lasers. And so the glasses, what give perspective or depth or dimension to what you're seeing? They do, but more than dimension. So, for example, if you walk through a 20-metre hologram tunnel, it might project um, Africa all around you. And you see off into the distance like a window. It's not like flat. You go, wow, I can see off hundreds of miles. But then more than that, when the animals come up to the walls... They actually walk through the walls. The lasers project them in the room and people go, oh my goodness, a, a brontosaurus just reached its neck down, has come into the tunnel and is trying to bite my hand off. Bruce Dell is the Chief Executive Officer of Axiom Holographics. So your zoo went gangbusters over the Christmas period, I hear. 13,000 people went through. We, we sold every ticket up until Christmas, six weeks before we even opened. Rocky. So very, very busy, which is good. 
So you're making the technology here. So I'm assuming you're using sort of big data banks and lasers, syncing them up. So we actually opened a factory in Yatla. See, a lot's changed. Australia used to be like a big farm and a big mine. And when people say most high tech in the world, what's it doing in Australia in Brisbane? Mm -hmm. But in the past, things like um, 3D printers and microchip ovens and calibration machines cost millions of dollars. The price of that has dropped down a lot to about 10,000, where even little Australian companies like ours can set up factories in places like Yatla between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. And we can produce the world's most high-tech equipment that a few years ago you would have only got out of Tokyo, Germany or America. Simply so, this means the cost of lasers have come down to something that you can is affordable for a company like yours. Yeah, so for example, Monash University down in Melbourne has a hologram room that they bought from America for $3 million. Now, that's the sort of cost hologram technology used to be. The public would never get a chance to experience a hologram herd of kangaroos jumping over them at that sort of price. You'd be paying like $1,000 a ticket to ever pay it off. Mm. But the cost of hologram technology, we've managed to bring it down so much that we're now able to bring this technology to the public that formerly they never would have been able to see. In my imagination, I have Ridley Scott's Blade Runner movie running where you saw, you know, both in the remake and the original sort of holographic advertisements, you know, mm. giant advertisements sort of on the side of buildings. Where is that? Why, why can't I look out and look at the Brisbane City Council building and go, oh, look, there's a hologram advertising uh, something, you know, the, the first, ABC. First thing is they still need uh, darkness. They still need nighttime. I think we'll get there. I think we'll see that come slowly in the next probably 20 years. But getting them to work in daytime, oh, very, very hard. Why is that? Because of sort of the laser God itself? God made the sun too bright and you're <laughs> going to have to make something brighter. My guest is Bruce Dell, Chief Executive of Axiom Holographic. So you're planning to take, take your holographic zoo global. What's, what's, the, what's the pitch? What's the plan? <laughs> so at the moment, the three most high-tech attractions in the world are things like Van Gogh Alive, which is flat projectors on walls. Uh, National Geographic made a Tutankhamun one. It's very good. Once again, flat projectors on walls. And in Tokyo, the most high-tech attraction in the world is a place called Team Lab, which is also flat projectors on walls. So when the Japanese and the Americans came out, what's this hologram zoo thing everyone's talking about? And for the first time, they saw dolphins come off the walls and fly around in the air and seahorses in the room all around them. They went, we haven't got anything close to this. So we're now in the situation where we're looking at expanding all over the world. We're uh, already signing our agreements, making alliances, still trying to find investors to do the Sydney one, because um, that's the next big one for us here in Australia, to do Sydney and Melbourne. And um, yeah, I think in the future, in the near future, we're going to be expanding quite rapidly, particularly as a, a very good destination for children's birthday parties. I'd like to see more than children's birthday parties. I, sort of, I, I want to see you know, high-tech Australian companies you know, knock it out of the park. I want to see high-tech Australian companies like yours just you know, take it to the Japanese, take it to the Americans, take it to the Europeans and say, we're not just a mine, we're not just a sheep <laughs> paddock, you know. Yes. I hope it's outrageously... Where, where are you planning on doing this? Uh, as in, well, we're already opening Cannon Hill and as for the expanding the others, I'm not allowed to talk too much, but we are looking at very quick, rapid expansion, a sort of a model where these things can just pop up everywhere and we sort of cover cover the country. I mean, places like Finland, Nokia made them number one in the world for mobile phones. Mm -hmm. I think with our securing of our patents and the fact we've won so many awards in holograms, I think we're going to see that we can build up the reputation of Australia as number one in hologram technology. And I mean, hologram technology is pretty important. They talk about technology revolutions. You have the phone, the TV, the motor car. Um, what's the next big technology revolution? I think TV and science fiction tells us it's holograms. And if we manage to be successful and, and keep a hold of that, Australia will then be the ones that hold on to the next big tech revolution. Just like Japan a few years ago, they held on to computer games. It was the computer game central. So that's sort of our big aim here. I hope you're outrageously successful and I speak to you again when that's the case. Bruce, thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. Bruce Dell, Chief Executive Officer of Axiom Holographic.